I'm Maria Shemkalian, the Vice Chair of Pennsylvania Film Industry Association, and I'm really excited today because we have D.B. Woodside as our guest today. And D.B. has worked on so many award-winning shows, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Suits 24, and of course, the most recent one that we all love, Lucifer. I am personally a huge fan, and this is our beloved Amenadio. <laughs> so we're really excited today. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's really, yeah. it's really great to be here and to be able to talk to um, students as well as teachers. Yeah, thank you. We, we appreciate your time and uh, we know you're busy now and it's crazy times, but we're truly grateful that uh, you're giving back to the film community and helping us build that bridge between those who are trying to make it and those who made it. Absolutely. And of course, our first question in building that bridge is how did you get started in the film industry? Um, wow. Um, <laughs> how I got started in the, started acting or started in the film industry specifically? Uh, both. Um, I got started acting. Um, I was, um, in high school, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, kind of a quiet, quiet kid and, uh, I loved, loved sports. Um, and so I was playing, um, high school football and unfortunately I got hurt uh, during one preseason and so I was kind of wandering the halls of my high school and I didn't know what to do with myself um, after school because it was too painful to uh, to to watch my friends uh, practice football and I happened to wander down a section of uh, the school that I uh, didn't go to uh, a lot which was the theater section and um, wound up sitting in the audience while they were teching uh, having tech week for uh, uh, a musical called Brigadoon. Mm -hmm. And I sat down in the back of the um, auditorium and I didn't move for the next three and a half hours. And it was just, uh, it was incredible. It was magical. It just took, took me away. And so um, eventually I healed, went, went back to football for that season. But as soon as um, I was done, um, I became involved with the theater department. And uh, it was just so incredible and, and magical. And, and that's what kind of pulled me in. And um, as far as uh, film and TV is concerned, um, flash forward to, I was at, in my last year at the uh, Yale School of Drama. And um, at the end of uh, Yale, they have their, uh, at least back then we called them league scenes. So I guess they're, um, and we did ours with uh, NYU. Mm -hmm. And um, I was fortunate enough to get uh, some some positive feedback and people wanted to see me. And at that time, um, uh, they were recasting for a uh, little show called uh, Murder One. Uh, it was a Stephen Bochco show, uh, the same person who did uh, NYPD Blue, um, Hill Street Blues. Uh, I mean, he's just one of the most prolific uh, television producers out there. Uh, he was amazing. Um, and they just saw this kid. Uh, they decided to take a chance on this kid. Uh, I was in New York City and they had me come down and read for a, a small role. And I just thought, well, there's no way I'm gonna get this, but it was just just incredible experience to, to meet someone um, um, on his level, you know, on that level. And, um, I ended up getting it nice. and uh, I went out to LA where I am now <laughs> uh, still. And um, I started, I started working as a kid and I'm basically a, a 24 year old um, mm -hmm. and started working on television. And that's how I started. Oh, but that's amazing to hear because you were already in your college years when you started acting and you know how people say that you know you have to start as a kid to really grow in the industry but you didn't and look where you are so this is very inspiring to hear yeah you can start in college and look there um there are some well-known actors that didn't start till they were in their 30s you know mm -hmm. so yeah. you know one of the greatest things about this profession is um i believe uh that that the longer you're alive the better you get mm -hmm. um and the roles are always going to be out there so uh um, people can start when they're children, people can start in, in college, people can start in their 30s, people can start in the middle of their life, you know, uh, if it's, if it's a passion, um, 
I say pursue it. Nice, thank you. You've done both theater and film. Which, and do you prefer one over another and why? And what are the real differences in, in approach between the um, acting and both? There are big differences. Um, what I would say is I, I don't necessarily have a preference, mm -hmm. um, but I would say um, as an actor, you have more leeway um, on stage, you know? Um, once you step out on that stage, it's yours. Um, how you control the pace of it, um, uh, how you deliver things, your, your uh, chemistry with, with your fellow actors that you've rehearsed and, and, and worked on. Um, there is no feeling like being on stage and uh, having a live audience, hearing them laugh, hearing them gasp, um, when you can hear a pin drop, there is no feeling yeah. uh, on earth like that um, as an actor. Um, now, what's great about film and TV is you have a chance to, what I call, um, do nuanced work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that can be really exciting because you get to kind of um, focus in on, on a character on a moment, on, on specific beats, and um, just really make them um, nuanced and keep, you can keep refining them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing is ever perfect, uh, uh, but whereas on stage, uh, you make a mistake, you gotta let it go because you have to keep going. You have another hour and a half to kind of get through this, this play. Now, when you're doing films, when you're doing TV, there's a, always a, a, another take, you know? So you have a chance to kind of do something a little different and hopefully a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You brought up mistakes on stage and, uh, <laughs> and it's terrifying if you forget a line or, or say a wrong one. So how do you first deal with the stage fright and then deal with if, something happens on the stage that you didn't expect it to happen. <laughs> yeah, um, listen, I mean, uh, something always goes wrong uh, during the run of a play. Always, always, no matter what. I don't care how, uh, how rehearsed you think you are um, and your, your, your fellow actors, uh, something is gonna go wrong eventually. Um, the best thing you can do is just stay relaxed and try to have a sense of humor about it. Um, as far as stage fright, I find that the more prepared you are, mm -hmm. uh, then the more prepared you will be when you have stage fright. Uh, so I'm one of those actors that I like to over prepare. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm ready, you know? So when that thing um, that's going to go wrong does go wrong, uh, at least, at least you're you're ready for it, so it can't throw you off, and that you're able to um, kind of ebb and flow with whatever that is. Um, as far as uh, forgetting a line, this has helped me uh, ever since I was a kid. Someone once told me it was a director when I was about 18 years old that said, "If you're on stage and you go up and you can't remember your line." The best thing to do is to move physically, move to the next spot that you know that you're supposed to be. Because as, as we're rehearsing plays and learning our lines, um, there is a type of, you know, yes, memory that, that, that we all um, um, employ. But the memory that a lot of us forget about is, is the one that our body does. And so a lot of times, if you go up on a line, if you just move through space to the next area that you know that where you're supposed to be, as soon as you start moving, your body remembers and it can kick off your memory up here and the line will come back. And that has never failed me. That I have to say, that has never failed me. And I've gone up quite a bit. And uh, um, when, I, when I start to kind of freak out, I just take a deep breath and go, okay, well, I know eventually I'm supposed to get down stage stage right 
So I start to move stage right and the lines start coming down. Wow, this is exactly the practical advice we're looking for. That, that's, a, that's a fantastic way of remembering things. Thank you. Do you think that training for theater actors should be different than for film actors? I do, mm -hmm. I do. Um, I'm trying to say this without uh, insulting any uh, strictly film actors. Um, Listen, I think the best training is, is for theater. Um, I think there's something about uh, being on the stage, you really have to um, utilize so many different parts of you. Uh, uh, your voice, uh, movement, speech. Um, so you're working on so many different, uh, you're, you're, you're coming at that, that role, uh, that experience, that medium from so many different angles. Um, and I feel like if you become a well-trained theater actor, that moving to film and learning that process is, is easier. I think, it, I think it's a lot more difficult to start out as a film actor and move to doing stage. Mm -hmm. um, it can be extremely overwhelming and, um, and daunting to say the least. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that, that I uh, started out in, in theater. Um, there's just something about it that uh, makes whatever film or television role that you have that you may consider to be difficult. If you come from stage, it's not gonna be as difficult um, as it is for someone that's just coming from film and TV. And that's just been my, my experience. So I might say something different, but uh, I stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that uh, taking just acting lessons, uh, going to some acting schools, private lessons, do you think that is equivalent to the university program as a, as a graduate of Yale's University School of Drama? Do you think that your background is, is a lot more helpful than private lessons with some professionals? I, listen, I think, I think private lessons, I think um, um, private lessons are great, especially if you're working on a specific role. Um, but the reason why I lean more towards university training is because you're doing it constantly, every single day. Mm -hmm. um, you're just, you are living, sleeping, eating, um, acting. You, you're constantly in productions, uh, both big and small. Um, you're getting a chance to play a range of characters in a short period of time. Um, I just think, and at a university setting, you, you get a chance to be bold and brave, which you should be, and take leaps, you know, um, uh, make bold decisions and then fail, you know, <laughs> um, because that's how you're going to learn, you know? Um, and so I would say to um, everyone and anyone um, make crazy decisions when you're in school because you're protected, you're safe, um, explore, experiment, go crazy. Um, because when you get out here, uh, it's very, very different. And, then all of a sudden it feels like everything that you do matters. And even though it shouldn't, um, it, can, it can feel that way. And, uh, and then I think private lessons when you're, when you're out of school, you know, especially for specific roles is great. Mm -hmm. But uh, an actor should continue even after university training, should continue to take lessons or uh, is already, you're set or theater is already... You're yeah, I think it, I think it depends on, on, um, what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're working a lot, then, then you're always applying the, the lessons that you've learned, um, from your university. Um, if you're not working a lot, I do recommend being in class, mm -hmm. um, because it is like being in the gym, right? Um, sure. you, you have to kind of keep it going. And I think a lot of times actors can can come out here and just think auditioning is a way to keep it going. It's not, you know, because you're trying to get a job. 
Um, so you still should, if you're, if you're not working all the time, then, then you really should try to be in classes, find a class um, that's going to give you the opportunity to do, to do a lot of scene work and, and to get up on your feet, uh, to get together with other actors um, working on stuff. It's just a way to stay fresh. Mm -hmm. You brought up representation, which is the key to success in this world, but very hard to get for the beginners. Uh, when do you think actors are ready to start looking for representation? Do they need uh, agent manager and publicist? And what is the difference really in the roles of agent and manager? Publicist is a little more clear, but agent and manager sometimes blends in a little bit. So uh, could you please elaborate on that world? <laughs> um, hmm. It's tricky. Um, when I was coming up, it was a lot clearer. Yeah. You know? um, now it, it 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 seems to be it seems that there are a lot of games unfortunately mm. um what i would suggest is trying to stay focused on the work and that if you're in a university setting try trying to or you're in high school and thinking about which which places you you might want to go um try to see what that university has at the end of it. Uh, meaning the reason why I wanted to go to Yale, NYU um, or, or ACT um, was because I, I saw that they had those league auditions at the end, right? So that was your moment. That's your opportunity to, to shine where you have agents and casting directors and managers all meeting in one place to check out what the new talent is. So uh, that's still great. Mm -hmm. um, if people don't have that, if they're already out of college, um, what I would suggest is finding acting classes that have associations with certain casting people. Um, because every once in a while, every few weeks or every few months, there's gonna be another kind of coming out party um, where you get to do one or two scenes and then reps are coming uh, to check out, you know, this, this, this unsigned talent. Um, you have to be very strategic, um, smart and do your research, find out, don't just take a class for the sake of taking a class unless you already have a rep. Mm -hmm. um, don't necessarily just go to a, a, a college, um, uh, try to see what that college has to offer on your way out. What are their connections, hopefully? Um, how are they in a position to, to set you up? Um, that's, that's what I would suggest. Um, and when it comes to uh, the differences between the three, I'll do the easiest one first. Uh, no one should worry about a publicist at all. When you're in a position uh, to have a publicist, they will actually find you. Mm -hmm. um, or you will have an agent or, or manager who uh, will introduce you to someone. Um, uh, so what I would say to all kind of young actors is try to save as much money as you can, try to hold on to your money, you know? Um, and the difference between agents and managers, uh, someone explained this to me, you know, and I, I laughed because it's so true. Um, agents nowadays are like corporations, you know? So an agent um, who is repping you uh, might have five of you. Mm -hmm. So for them, as great a relationship as you may have with them, they want you to get the job. But if you don't, and another client of theirs who's your type gets the job, they're happy, mm -hmm. you know? A manager only has you. Mm -hmm. That's all they have. Mm -hmm. um, if you run into managers that have your similar type, I... I wouldn't go there. A manager tends to be smaller um, and only has one of 
of your type. Now there are management companies out there now um, and they're functioning what I would say kind of like smaller agencies um, trying to manage your, your career. But when you're first starting out, um, I would lean towards finding uh, a manager, mm -hmm. smaller um, agencies, uh, smaller management teams. Um, it's not necessarily how big a place is. Um, I can really attest to that. Um, it really has to do with how passionate people are for you. Mm -hmm. You need passion. Passion trumps size all the time. Mm -hmm. And how does it work uh, with the agents? It's the percentage that they get from your job. So they're interested in getting you the job. But like you said, they have a few of your types. So they send yeah. everybody. How does it work with the managers? Is it also percentage? Is it of the same jobs? What if it's the agent who sent you to that job? Like how does that mathematically work? <laughs> yeah, that's why I say, you know, try to keep it as small as you can for as long as you can. Okay. Because say for instance, you can have an agent and um, they send you out to the audition and you go get the, you go out and you get that role. Mm -hmm. And then the manager may talk to the casting people about that role. Um, and each of those people are now getting 10% of your, um, of your check. Mm -hmm. And there are going to be times when you feel like only one person deserves to get 10% and that the other person really didn't do that much, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you're signed with both of them. They're both going to get a, a, a piece of, of your check. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it should never be more than 10%. So I know there are some managers out there who talk about 15%. Don't buy that. They are not good managers okay. then. It should be <laughs> It should be 10%. Um, an agent gets 10%, a manager gets 10%. That's, that's how it should be. Okay. Uh, and again, a little bit back to the, to the <laughs> responsibilities. So agent is strictly looking for the job. So it's only that they well, need- uh, Yeah, it's, it's, okay. it, 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 it's, a, it's a give and take, right? So the projects, are going to come to an agency mm -hmm. and then they're going to take a look at who's on their their roster and who is right to from from their from their um side to send out for that now what can also happen though is and this is why it's tricky is a manager can see something that your agents haven't thought about and your manager calls your agency, fights for you to be sent in on that project because the agent didn't even think about it. Wow. So they do work hand in hand. And that's, I get why it, it, <laughs> it, it confuses people, <laughs> uh, trust me. Yeah. Um, but, it, but, it, but it works hand in hand. Um, mm -hmm. So what I would say to people is, one is not better than the other, mm -hmm. but one is more personal. Mm -hmm. Managers, you tend to have a much more personal relationship with your manager. Mm -hmm. um, your manager tends to look out more for your interest. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a personal relationship with your agent. They can love you. But if they have five of you and one of the five gets the job, they are getting paid. Mm -hmm. Your manager probably only has one of you. So they want you to get the job so you both get paid, yeah. right? Because if you don't get the job, they're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that, like I said, that's not to say one is better than the other. It's just, it's, it's different. And as different as they are, they both do very similar things. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And choosing wise so at first you're waiting for them to choose you and come to you but then once they do then it's hard because there's a few good ones coming to you and now how do you make that choice and don't have the cognitive dissonance that's killing you 
<laughs> um, I always say, go with the people who seem passionate mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. um, listen to um, what they feel like they can do for you, um, what they feel like your, your, your strengths are. Um, and this is, a, this is just a thing for me. Um, when, you, when you sit down with them, if they're blocking out the world, right? They're not looking at their phone. They're not taking phone calls or, uh, you know, uh, sending emails. Um, that is a, uh, that's a bad sign. Uh, I think sometimes people think, oh, when I was in there, they were so busy. No, I, I don't care, you know? When you're with them, the world should stop. They should sit down with you and speak with you and they shouldn't be looking past you or at their phone or what's going on. They should have an assistant who's taking all those messages that don't need to be plugged in to the world with the you know 10 to 30 minute conversation that they are having with you. They can be unplugged because you should be important. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, I would, I, I would pay attention to, um, how they, how they listen to you and, and how they speak, speak with you, because you also need to have enough faith in them that you're not calling them up every day and bothering them and wondering what's going on because they don't want to see that or, or hear that. So you have to pick someone that makes you feel good about you, that makes you go, okay, I feel like I can have faith in this person and I can trust them. So it's not gonna be a dysfunctional relationship and have me you know, acting out of desperation, calling them, emailing them, wondering what's, what's going on. You don't wanna put yourself in that kind of a position. You don't wanna lower yourself that way. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, we're all sensitive people. Um, actors can act out of desperation. <laughs> um, the business can, can, can make us feel that way. Yeah. So we have to protect ourselves. And a way to protect ourselves is surrounding yourself with good, decent, hardworking people, people that you can have faith in because you need to have faith in people so you can walk away. If you feel like you're going to have to hover, um, that's going to bring out not, not such attractive sides of you. Yeah. And, and, and then that manager or that agent is going to, you know, quickly get turned off. Mm -hmm. so, you, so, so you have to protect yourself by surrounding yourself with people that you can have faith in so you can walk away and, and trust that they're doing their job. Thank you. How do you select projects that you work on? Uh, what are some absolutely not? And what are some musts for you to want to participate in them? I'm going to give you the most honest answer. Please. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, that I can. And this, is, this can be heartbreaking for, for most of us actors. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you don't get a choice. Ooh. Most of the time it really is about going out there and auditioning and you're trying to get to the next job and the next job and the next job. And so you find yourself having to take roles that in projects that, you know, um, may not be things that you're dying to do. Uh, what I would say is like, you know, never do anything that, that offends you, mm -hmm. but, there are a lot of us, you know, um, I'll, I will say myself, right? Um, I've been working 20, 25 years. If I were to say to you that every single project I have ever been involved with has been a dream come true, I would be lying, you know? <laughs> um, chances are I will never say publicly what the projects, you know, that I worked on that uh, I wasn't thrilled with, mm -hmm. or at times it was a struggle to, to get through them. Mm -hmm. But you always have to think, okay, well, this is the job. And unlike being in school where you do get to pick and choose like what, what, what plays that, that you uh, get to be a part of and, and, and 
within a school, they're only picking the best plays out there, right? That doesn't happen in real life, right? So you're out here and you're auditioning and you're just trying to get um, a job so you can support yourself to get to the next job to, to get known. Um, I will say probably in the last um, eight, nine years, I do have more say. Mm -hmm. um, but even that, it's, it's you're going in, if, if there are five shows that I love, right? Um, the top two that I really wanna do, I may not get. And then there are three others that I'm like, all right, I mean, those are, those are okay. You know, I mean, it's, that's, that's fine. And you may get one of those shows. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the world, right? That's, that's, that is what, what um, happens out here. And so there is this myth that um, uh, I've, I've noticed there, there's just this myth, this, this, this belief that as actors we're out here and we're choosing these projects that, that we're in, that is just not true. There is about, I'd, I'd probably say about 5% of actors that get to choose the projects, you know, um, um, that they're in. I guarantee you if the majority of us could choose the types of projects that, that we wanted to be in, it would change the landscape of the industry, there would be certain <laughs> types of shows 100%. that you would never see again. Okay, um, but that's it's so. So what I would say to people, especially young people, is listen. Um, don't be pretentious, mm -hmm. um, especially you know. Uh, be, just be open when you're young. Um, come out and just get the work. You know, uh, if there's one thing that I can say. Um, Work gets you more work, gets you more work. Just come out here and keep keep working, you know? Um, uh, don't be so choosy, you know? Um, what you wanna try and do is get out here, get a job, work, make some money, pay some bills, make enough money that, that, that you can set aside. And then maybe at some point, um, whenever that is for, for that actor, you've been successful for a little stretch of time. You say to your agent, you say to your manager, okay, um, I have some money now. Like I can be okay for like a year or two. I just want to go out for projects that I love and let's see what happens. If I don't get those projects, then I'm going to have to go back to auditioning all over the place for everything. And we'll see what happens, you know? And that may happen several times, you know, during the course of, of one's career. Um, but that's okay. Because when you get those projects that you really get a chance to shine in, that you really care about, it's going to show. And, um, and, and what happens for, I think, a lot of actors is you come out and you do some film work, you do some television um, you make a little bit of money and then you turn to your agents and go, now I want to go back to the stage, you know, <laughs> and you go back to the stage where you, where you fall in love with, with the craft of acting all over again, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, we don't get to choose uh, anywhere near what people think we do. It's really about, and, and that's, that's a career, you know, if you're blessed to be able to, come out of school and support yourself, support your family, um, um, then that's a, that's a good life. That's a good life. Yeah. You brought up auditions, which, which are terrifying at times. And some say that they've learned to enjoy them, but let's all be honest, <laughs> they're really stressful, especially when you're just starting out and you're going to so many. So how do you prepare for an audition? And do you have any secrets or effective techniques in the audition room to make yourself remembered? Um, well, here's the thing that I would say about auditioning for people. Um, I can say this, you know, uh, try not to let it scare you. Yeah. I know it's gonna scare you, <laughs> uh, but, but try not to let it scare you because 
you need to audition, especially when you're just starting out, you need to audition as much as humanly possible. Um, don't say no to anything um, uh, that doesn't offend you, you know? Um, uh, but if there are roles that you're not interested in, uh, still go out for it, you know, get in as many rooms as you possibly can. You, because that's the only way that you're going to get better. That's the only way that you're going to understand how those rooms work. Um, that's the only way that you're going to get those bad experiences out of the way, because there are a lot of bad experiences when you're auditioning from the way people uh, are reading for you. And that's one of the things that, that I would say uh, is a big difference is when you're in school and you're reading with people, you are constantly reading with talented people. You know, same thing with being in class. One of the things that you have to get out of the way uh, in auditioning is you're gonna be reading with people that are terrible. <laughs> um, a lot of casting directors, when they are also reading with you, they're having to do two or three different things. Yes, they're reading with you, but they're also watching you. Um, so they don't make the best scene partners, you know? And you, you kind of have to get used to that. And the only way that you can is by auditioning as much as you can as far as try as you know what to do when you're in those rooms um try to remember that everyone who's going in there is reading off the same set of signs uh so a little secret of mine um and you know you have to be careful how much you do this but a little secret of mine is i like to go in there and just change up some of the lines slightly, just slightly um, enough that when someone is watching your tape back or watching what you're doing, they're going to feel like there's something different about you, hmm. you know? So if everyone is coming in there and reading the same lines, it can start to feel like from their point of view, one great, you know, big blur, you know? Um, and sometimes they might, you know, uh, be playing back the tape later or talking to someone and saying something like, you know, I'm not really sure, but I felt like I was hearing those lines for the very first time, right? Mm -hmm. That's because you were probably adding some, you know, some, some, some things that, that they haven't heard. Now you can't be crazy because you're going to have the writer also, <laughs> right? And you don't want to offend them. So when I say that you, you want to do it sparingly, um, I mean that, um, but you want to do it just enough that it colors um, how they see it, how they hear it. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my my little uh, advice to people going into those rooms. Thank you. That that, that is a really interesting tool to you. <laughs> Thank you. You brought up. Uh, well, you hinted at rejection <laughs> happening often. And uh, it, it's difficult uh, to handle and not just rejection, even just not hearing and not knowing and or, or getting called and asked, oh, do you have this and this and this paperwork and then not hearing from them. So how do you deal with this uncertainty or certainty that you weren't the one picked emotionally? How do you handle it and keep on going without letting self-doubt take over and giving up? Listen, there is no way. <laughs> uh, that 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 it's not gonna it's not that there's no way that it's not gonna hurt you and mm -hmm. if you're not hurt by it then you're not caring enough and the way that I started I started to look at it differently um, about the second or third year that I was out here and it, and I had a I had a conversation with an older actor and I was getting bummed out and um, you know sometimes hearing feedback sometimes not um, sometimes learning that they went with that actor that you feel like I was better than act actor. Like what is going on? Um, you know, all of that. We all feel that. Right. And they said to me, they said, do you know what? It's not about not feeling it. It's not about pretending like it doesn't matter. It's about learning how to get back off the mat faster that you're supposed to go in there and every single audition, you should feel like you left your blood, sweat, and tears on that floor. You gave everything that you had. And when you walk out that room, you have to learn how to just throw it away and not look back. And so a technique that 
that has worked for me is I go in there, I give it everything that I have. When I leave, before I get to my car, I, I find some kind of trash and I chuck the sides. I don't want any trace of that material, that audition anywhere. I just leave it behind and I go about my day and I just keep moving forward. Don't look back. Don't wonder what they're thinking. Don't just move forward. If they want you, they will track you down. If they want you, you will get a call. Don't, you just have to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. You have to keep moving forward. You, you just can't look back when it comes to um, hearing from auditions. You just mm -hmm. have to keep moving forward and, mm -hmm. and learning how to be resilient. You know, not, not, not feeling things because we're actors, we are sensitive people, you know, this is what we have and we, and we have to hold on to this and, and uh, nurture it. It's just about getting up off the mat faster. It's about not, not looking back, but moving forward until that right project comes your way. Mm -hmm. And like you said earlier, over-preparing. So you don't yeah. feel bad about anything you've done. You've done your best job. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. How do you move from getting auditions for smaller parts to suddenly getting recognized for bigger parts? Because when you are uh, doing all those, you know, small, maybe start with one-liners and guest stars, you're being recognized as that guest star actor. So how do you make that leap? That's tricky uh, <laughs> because we have very little say in that, you know, you just have to focus on always doing your, your best work. Um, and if you can put yourself in positions to get um, bigger auditions, um, really show up, you know, um, it really is about being prepared. They, those auditions will come but you have to be prepared and you have to go for broke when they land in your lap. Mm -hmm. um, you can, depending on who is representing you, you can um, uh, start to push your reps to send you out for, for bigger things. Um, uh, another thing that I would suggest is trying to meet with casting directors, try to, try to build a, a a relationship with them. Um, and a great way to do that is, is simply to ask for generals. Um, it has nothing to do with the project. You're just asking to sit down with them and uh, introduce yourself, where you're from, and you know maybe take five minutes of their time. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Before you start working on a project or a show, how do you prepare for that role? So you, you're just about to get on that set for the first time. How do you get into that mode or maybe research something? What's your process? The number one thing for me, um, and, I, and I said this a little bit earlier, is um, preparation. Um, for me, um, everything comes off of the lines. Everything comes off of the script. I've realized uh, in my career, when I've had a bad day, it's because I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was. Always. If I'm prepared, and what I mean by prepared is over prepared. If I know those scenes, front words to backwards, inside and out, I've gone over the lines doing my laundry, riding my bike, washing the dishes. I know those lines, you know, there is no way that you can be thrown. There's no way. Um, and so you stop thinking about the lines when you know them that well, and then you're able to focus on the beats and the moments and the character, your actions, what you're trying to do, because the last thing on your mind is, what are the lines? How does this go? Um, so what I would say, the most important thing is being not just prepared, but over prepared with your lines, because I feel like what we do as actors, it's 
Um, we are emotional musicians, you know, and you have to know that score so you can improvise. You know what, what the key signature is. Uh, um, and once you know that, and you know that really well because, because you're trained or because you're overprepared, you can play, it's jazz. Um, and, you know, you're never worried about uh, being, you know, out of tune because you know it. It's in your body, it's in your soul. Um, so being over prepared. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When you're on set and maybe you're in a bad mood or in a happy mood and there's a sad scene or, or you're got in a fight with your co-star, you know, I mean, it's people, things happen. How do you stay in character fully and wholeheartedly? <laughs> That can sometimes be challenging because yeah. when you're on set, uh, you know, it, it's, it's like one big uh, dysfunctional family, <laughs> you know, and it's family that you love, you know, um, you will get in fights with co-stars it just like you're getting fights with your loved ones, because these are the people that see you <laughs> so much and you're going to get on each other's nerves. That's human. You know, um, uh, you just have to try and, um, Stay, stay true to who you are, you know, um, uh, always watch your ego and stay mm -hmm. humble. Um, uh, walk around with humility. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when it comes to staying in character, actors are going to be different, right? So make sure that you get what, what you need. Um, for me, I can hang out with, 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 uh, with my friends on set, the crew, co-stars, in between takes, talking about that football game or that play or that uh, new artist that came out with this great sound um, um, all day long. But I have my specific scenes, scenes if they tend to be highly emotional or explosive, um, I can't do that that day. You know, um, so what I do when it's taking me some time is the most, I feel like the most polite thing that I can do is on those days, I'll have some earphones with music. That's a polite way of people going, oh, you know, that person is in the zone today. You know, they're not being arrogant. They're not being method. Um, you know, it's 60, 70% of the time they're talking, hanging out but they have some important scenes today. Um, so they have their earphones on, they're playing some music, whatever kind of keeps you in that zone. Music helps me. Mm -hmm. um, it just kind of keeps me where I need to be. Um, and I'll pick, you know, I'll have a playlist depending on what that scene calls for that, that day. And this way I, I, I have the earphones on, I can go away, kind of sit, sit by myself while they're turning around or something just so I can stay in that bubble in in that zone and people tend to be really respectful of that mm -hmm. thank you that that's that's a good way to approach it so you, you find your me time and, and yeah get into that bubble thank you Now you brought up a few times that actors are sensitive actors are emotional because that comes with the job but when you're not on the job, how do you, especially when you are working on the TV show, constantly being in character, how do you let go of this personality, these emotions, these struggles, and just stay true to yourself as a person? I think you have to get away from it. I really do. Um, you know, you can spend so much time auditioning, um, chasing this dream, um, pursuing it, which is, which is great. But once you get the job, it's, it's weird to say, but now you have to do the exact opposite. You know, um, now you have the job and you're working and now you need to kind of um, treat yourself well. And um, I feel uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, kind of taking time off, trying to get out of town, spending it with um, the people who really know you. 
uh, the people who are gonna, you know, excuse my language, call you on your shit, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, never gonna allow you to get a big head or um, uh, the people that you love and that you can always be real with and you don't feel like you have to um, present a version of yourself because in this business, and it's true, you know, um, a lot of times you feel like you are, that you have to present, you know, um, a certain side of yourself, you know, that you have to always be on. And there is, you know, unfortunately, there is some, some truth to that. Um, but the reason I say that shouldn't make people depressed because that's in every business. Mm-hmm. That's in every business. And that, it, uh, you know, I have friends that work in an office and as soon as they walk in that office, they have to be a certain way and they can't wait till five o'clock, six o'clock comes so they can go home and be with their family and relax, undo the tie and, <laughs> you know, just let it all go. So the reason why we shouldn't get worked up or depressed about that is because we all have to do that it's just different in our business because we have to do it at maybe odd times like different times um so when you're fortunate enough to to get that job that that you've worked so hard for um get away from there you know when you're not on set don't be on set um find things that you love to do that have nothing to do with acting, whether it's, Mm -hmm. I don't know, photography, uh, swimming, working out, hiking, um, uh, playing with cameras. I don't know, you know, (laughs) but just, just do something that, that, that takes you away from it. So, so your um, imagination can, can rest because it's, it's, things are happening back there. So you don't need it always up here. Mm-hmm. What would be the way for aspiring filmmakers uh, to get a star of your level in their films? Um, you know what I would say, honestly, first is mm-hmm. anyone who considers themselves to be a star is not someone you want to work with. <laughs> um, I think the question is so flattering. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but if there's anyone that wants to uh, work with me, um, they can they can reach out to me, reach out to my agents, my manager. Um, I read everything, I look at everything. Uh, for me, it's, it's all about material. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's, it's not about, uh, you know, the number of lines or if you're the lead or not. It's just, for me, if it's, I wanna, I wanna be in, in good things. Um, I wanna be in great things. I wanna feel like, I'm a collaborator. Um, I wanna work with someone that's inspiring, someone that likes to work hard, uh, someone that believes in themselves and, uh, and you know, believes in me. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's what I would say, um, honestly. Um, that's nice. Yeah, just, just, yeah. just reach out to those actors, those, those artists mm-hmm. that you respect, um, that you love and hopefully they will be who you imagine them to be and uh and 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 the project will be what you hope it is yeah. um and that people can work together mm-hmm. thank you that, that was really moving thank you and i'm sure it gave a lot of hope to all the aspiring filmmakers now what would be either the three key pieces of advice or three mistakes, or maybe three life lessons that you can now share with those who are just at the beginning of the path and tell them not to do maybe, <laughs> or do. Um, the, the number one thing that I would say to uh, every actor, and some may be okay with this, some may not wanna hear this, it's not good enough to just be an actor anymore. You have to write. You mm. have to write. If there is anything that I want, young people to hear, <laughs> you have to write, you have to develop that skill set. Mm-hmm. Um, agents, managers, the business, it has changed. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, um, people have gotten lazier. Uh, and what I mean by that is they want to be able to package you. 
They want to not just um, see you as an actor. They want to see you as a creative force that you have, that you have a pilot, you have a show idea that you have a movie. Uh, yes. That, that you want to be in. Um, but they can, because they stand to make more money. I'll just be blunt, right? They stand to make a lot more money with a, with a project than just with a person who wants to occasionally act in some things. So yes, that still happens, but people are flocking to um, those um, that are able to write, cast themselves, cast their, their friends. So I would say write, write, write. As much as you want to be an actor, really focus on writing. Become a better writer. Learn how to write. Um, write day and night. Just really write. That is the number one thing that that I would say. Um, I think the good. second thing that 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 I would say uh, to to young artists is um, stay away from the people that want to have a nonstop party. You know. <laughs> Um, who uh, uh, seem to be about the life uh, more than the craft. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be sometimes hard to figure out. I'm not trying to say to young people that you can't go out and have a good time. Lord knows I did. Um, and, like, enjoy your youth, have fun. You're only young ones. But if this is something that you wanna take seriously, one thing that I would say is the most successful people that I've worked with in the business are not necessarily the ones that are the most naturally talented. They're the hardest workers in the room. So they have a, they, they have a, a, um, a level of talent, yes, mm -hmm. but they work, they outwork people. And while everyone is out kind of having fun, they're home learning two, three, four more monologues. They're home uh, uh, just taping themselves uh, and, and looking at how they come off on, on, on film, analyzing it, things not to do, things to do. They're home learning how to be a better writer, working on that project you know, uh, uh, writing that, that third or fourth play, writing that pilot, taking uh, classes online to become a better writer. They are working night and day. And when they tell you they're not working, they're lying, you know? So there are people out there, I guarantee you that they are working really hard. You have to outwork them. Mm -hmm. um, and the final thing that I would say is when you get a chance to, to, to be around people that, that uh, have a lot of experience, if, if you get a chance to get that first job, um, um, I would say try to, try to get on set as often as you can. Even the days when you're not working. If you're only working one scene, hang out the whole day. No one's going to kick you off. Mm -hmm. you know. If you're in that episode or doing a small role in that film, show up when you're not working. No one's going to kick you off. You're, you're a part of it. Just stand in the background, be quiet, <laughs> be nice, yeah. and just watch. Just watch yeah. everything. Be a fly on the wall. Soak it all up all the time. Never, ever stop. You are, if you are part of that movie, if you are part of that television show, it, it, it just be there. You can it might feel weird and you might feel like you're um, uh, uh, invading. You're not. No one is gonna kick you off. Just stand in the back, be quiet, be nice and watch. It's the best way. Best and those are the three things that, that I would say to people. Thank you. These were completely unique things that we haven't gotten yet as advice. So this is really great. And again, very practical. Thank you, DB. Everything you've said is something you can just, you know, put to work right away. That's fantastic. And to end this amazing masterclass, which I didn't only enjoy, but also learned a lot. <laughs> Who would you like to nominate to also send the elevator back down and help aspiring actors and filmmakers make it? 
Um, I will quickly offer up three people and then you can pick, uh, you know. Um, I'll contact all one, three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one is a actress named Saru Rao, mm -hmm. uh, graduate of ACT. Uh, she's been knocking around here for years. Uh, razor smart, uh, uh, super friendly, um, and she's Indian American. So she has a perspective as a minority and a, a woman. Um, we are very different. She has ha built a career in comedy, um, uh, half hours. Uh, she is hilarious, um, uh, very generous. Uh, so, so I, so I would offer her up. I would also uh, offer up uh, uh, Coleman Domingo, um, mm -hmm. who is a fantastic black actor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he, he is in the latest. A special episode of Euphoria right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he's just incredible. Uh, he's also on Fear the Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. um, he did uh, an episode of, of Lucifer. Um, he's, he's just brilliant. And, and I believe uh, he is a Tony nominated, if not Tony award winning uh, mm -hmm. actor. So, so he's fantastic. And what the last the person- Lucifer? Uh, he played Father Frank. It was amazing. Yes. Um, and the last person who I would offer up is a writer, mm -hmm. uh, David David McMillan. David McMillan. Uh, he was a writer on the first season of uh, Lucifer. Mm -hmm. um, he uh, graduated from Yale uh, also. Um, uh, he has a perspective from uh, 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 a, a writer's perspective from from the business um he has written uh, several plays uh he's uh a staff writer that's jumped around on various award-winning shows nice. um and uh he's he's also brilliant so any of those three would be fantastic perfect i am excited about all three i'll reach out to all of them and db it's been such pleasure I mean, after watching you on screen and getting to know you personally, being so humble and kind and giving, it's really been such an honor to talk to you. So thank you so much for, oh, for your you. time, <laughs> for thank your guidance. You. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Thanks. And uh, tell your husband hello as well. I will. I definitely will. And everybody who's been watching, we hope to see you on big screens and top streaming platforms very soon. Thank you very much. And thank you, DB. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.